There was a time then most things were nature. Most was habitat. And you were trying to connect a couple of towns by a road. That was the corridor of that day. Well, now most things are human and we need to connect the fragments of nature, of habitat, with nature corridors. We started with a dream 30 years ago, an idea of the entire Northwest landscape, but it's more than vision. There's an element of strategy needed to get it done. The basic way animal populations work is kind of the bigger the better. So when we start to break up populations into smaller groups, each one of those little individual groups then becomes more vulnerable. If the North Cascades are adequately connected to the British Columbia coast ranges, to the Rockies, to the South Cascades across I-90, then populations of wildlife are able to interact. We formed the Cascades Conservation Partnership to purchase and protect 45,000 acres of land that are now public lands and habitat for wildlife. We then turned our attention to form a coalition and address the remaining barrier that was bisecting the corridor, Interstate 90. Now, wildlife crossing structures are underway, helping wildlife move safely over the freeway and connecting wildlife again, from the Alpine Lakes Wilderness to Mount Rainier. We are gonna restore the connections of wildlife populations in the North and South Cascades. These crossing structures will be out there forever. So what's next? We're thinking about the heavily fragmented arid lands in the Columbia Basin of our state. We all know Eastern Washington are inspired by its big open desertness. There isn't much of that in Washington. We need more of it. It's for that reason that we started our Sage Lands Heritage Program to add our Conservation Northwest MO into this landscape that really needs some help. You look around, you can see forever. You can see wildlife, you can see songbirds. It's all right here and it's big and it's wide and it's beautiful. My name is Jay Keeney. I work for Conservation Northwest in OMAC, Washington. Some of the sagebrush around here is the true old growth type forest that we need to have out here for species to survive. Often people visit the sage land and see them as barren, but it couldn't be further from the truth. There is a huge diversity of wildlife. There's mule deer, elk, some moose. There's sharp-tailed grouse, badgers, bears, coyotes. I think occasionally there's been wolves passed through this area. They're uniquely adapted to that open and harsh environment. When you look at the sagebrush habitat in Washington State, it's a fairly large block of land. However, there's zones that are pinch points that connect everything together. That connected backbone is gonna be critical to all the different types of wildlife movement that's needed. These constrained pieces of the landscape where we have limited options for wildlife to move from one point to another. Those become focus areas because if we lose those pinch points, we lose the entire network. Mule deer, through the course of the year, move and follow the vegetation and the food sources. Highway 97 cuts through a major east-west connection zone. In a 12-mile stretch, 350 deer a year are killed. When I drive this road and see a deer alongside the road, it makes me sick to my stomach. The best solution is to get this underpasses put on this highway with appropriate fencing as well. We have to look at all the partners that really want to see this happen and join them together and get a momentum that people can't ignore. One of the main things I think that Conservation Northwest has always put forward is that it's not always just about the wildlife or the habitat, it's about the communities and the people that live in them. The thing about nature, wolves, wild places, they exist out in the rural landscape. We can't impose our will on those places. We have to find ways to save the nature we love through common ground rather than culture war. These are essential partnerships that help us keep nature and human communities whole. Working for Conservation Northwest, we've never reneged on a promise. And people in small communities like where I live, if you renege on a promise, you're done. And we're not done here. It's important to me that our members know that there's something a little more special here, that we have a record of success. You're not sending us money just for a feeling that you like nature. You're sending us money because we're protecting nature. There's a return on investment. At Conservation Northwest, we not only come up with a vision that is sound and built by science, we deliver on that on the ground through tangible actions, building coalitions, bringing people together, 
and actually making things happen.